our rudder modification we did is, is actually not a traditional one that most people do on the RL. Most people actually move the pin tools to make the rudder more vertical. What I've done is I've actually opened up the back of the rudder box at the top to allow the rudder to be able to rotate at the top backwards to make it more vertical, leaving the pin tools where they are. The effect of this is that it puts about 10 to 15 percent of the rudder's surface in front of the pin tool line rotation, uh, and this actually gives you a balance to the rudder so that you get the hydrodynamic forces helping you turn the rudder. And uh, you know, last few days we've been sailing, there's been absolutely no effect on performance. In fact, it's probably improved performance uh, with the rudder being much, much more easy for the autopilot to handle. Um, and also the back of the boat not being slewed around quite so badly in really rough conditions. Okay, so to understand rudder balance, we'll have a look at what the standard configuration of the RL28 is uh, to start off with, and also what the standard configuration most trailer sailors are to start off with. So you have the back of the boat, two black lines there represent the pin tools, the red represents the rudder blade, green handle, and the dotted green line here represents the line along which those pin tools rotate. Now you might notice that the rudder blade is completely behind that line of rotation. And this is what you would actually call an unbalanced rudder. There is no balance to the rudder at all. Now people sometimes think the sweep back of the RL's rudder is actually the fault of causing a heavy helm or the unbalanced rudder, but in fact it's actually the fact that the blade is behind that line of rotation. So if we look over here at a top view, the black dot there represents the point of rotation of the pin tools, the red represents the rudder blade, and the black arrows here represent the water flow. Now in a straight ahead direction, in a boat that has a balanced sails, balanced sails and a balanced rig, there'll be no pressure on the tiller handle at all. It will just sit in the middle and there'll be no, no pressure needed to keep it there. If we turn the tiller to the side so that the rudder blade deflects to the side, which is what turns the boat, the water will start hitting one side of the rudder and it does two things. One, it will deflect and cause the boat to start turning and two, it creates a turning force on the rudder back towards the centre. So those pink arrows there represent the turning force back towards the centre. And like any pivoting system, on the other end of the pivot you have the tiller handle and the same force is being applied at the tiller handle to force the tiller back to the centre. Now this is what you feel as tiller pressure. And on an unbalanced rudder, it can, it can be very, very strong because the amount of water hitting the rudder can be quite strong and it causes a strong force pushing the rudder back to the centre or pushing the tiller back to the centre as well. Now, in a balanced rudder, we do this a little bit differently. We actually have a section of the rudder to balance those forces. So we'll have a look at that now. Right, so now looking at a balanced rudder in comparison, the classic way of balancing a rudder, if we look at the, side, the picture here from the side where the, with the back of the boat, the pin tools and the rudder, is to have a part of the rudder blade in front of the uh, line of rotation of those pin tools. So the green dotted line there is a rotation line. And as you can see, there's a section of the rudder in front of that line and there's a section of the rudder behind that line. Now classically, uh, most build, boat builders will tell you that section in front should be about 18% of the wetted surface and that will actually give you balance to the rudder. Now we'll explain how that, why that balances the rudder and why it actually reduce, it results in lower tiller pressures. So if we go over to the top view over here, again the flow is going down the page like that. And in the straight ahead, straight ahead uh, position, the rudder has flow on equal sides, there is no pressure on the tiller, so you have no pressure. When you turn, however, you now notice that the, the, the point of rotation is not actually at, at the front of the rudder, it's actually part way through the rudder. And if we look at the water flow hitting the rudder, on this side of the point of rotation, the rudder will be pushed around in that direction. So it will want to push the tiller back to the centre, giving you some, rudder pre some tiller pressure. But on the other side, that the, a part of the water flow is hitting the rudder in, on the top end of the uh, rotation point here, and it's actually trying to force the tiller away from the centre. So you get two forces that are counteracting each other. It's a bit like on a seesaw. This one's pushing this way, this one's pushing this way, and what you end up result do, what the result is, is that you take this one away from this one and it gives you a smaller pressure pushing back towards the centre. Now if you made that area in front of the uh, rotation point too big, 
you'd have a too much force here, too little force here, and the runner would actually swing over uncontrollably and lock in a turning position. So it's important to get that amount of rudder in front of that pintle point actually the right amount. And like I say, it's about 18%. So that's the classic way of balancing a rudder. It's usually in a linear fashion down the rudder, but you can do it another way, and that's the way I've done it on the RL28 that I'll show you now. All right, so to the RL28, how we balance the rudder using my method on the RL28. Again, this is your classic RL28 configuration, swept back transom, uh, pintles, rudder box, and rudder following the line of the transom. Now, if you draw a dotted line where the pintle, where the rotation of the pintles is, uh, you get this line well in front of the rudder blade, which means it's not balanced. In fact, it's actually quite a fair way behind the, the rudder blade is quite a fair way behind, which means it takes quite a lot of force to push that rudder blade sideways into the water flow. Um, and most people who try to modify this do it by extending the pintle, uh, top pintle of the uh, rudder box bringing the rudder more vertical, but it doesn't actually solve the problem because the pintle line of rotation also moves in that direction, which means the rudder is still behind that rotation line. So you don't really balance the rudder by just extending the pintle. Now what I've done on my boat, which is a fairly simple modification, but it actually works very, very well, is that the rudder box has tabs top and bottom to locate the rudder. I've removed the top one created a bracket around the outside of the, the rudder box to allow the rudder to move backwards whilst maintaining the strength of the rudder box. But it lets the top of the rudder move back and the bottom of the rudder to move forward. Now if you get, go along this dotted line, which is the line of pintle rotation, it now go, cuts through the bottom corner of the rudder. Meaning this section of rudder is helping you to turn the rudder, this section of rudder is resisting you to turn the rudder. And if you subtract the two, one from the other, you actually get a lighter tiller pressure. So this rudder is actually balanced in the correct manner. Not the classic way of balancing, just generally mostly balanced rudders do it in a line up the rudder. This is a corner. But what I have found on the RL28 with this method, even in heavy weather, I can now steer with one or two fingers, whereas before I had to have a firm grip and quite a lot of force applied to the rudder to turn the uh, boat. So very successful in, in actually balancing the rudder, even by doing it this way. So, uh, and I'm sure this could be applied to virtually any trailer sailor with a rudder box so that it has enough room to allow the rudder to rotate a bit at the bottom and by removing part of the top of the box and letting it rotate to the back at the top. So there you go, easy way of balancing a trailer sailor's rudder. Okay, so to balance the rudder on an RL28, the traditional way of doing it was to extend the top pintle out so the rudder became more vertical. Now that actually doesn't do anything to actually balance the rudder. So to balance the rudder on an RL28 properly, or using my method, which is actually a relatively simple way of doing it, you cut out the tab at the top, which holds the rudder from moving backwards at the top. And once you've cut out the tab at the bottom, you've got to make a you have to make a bracket that allows the rudder to move back about 55, 50 to 75 millimetres. Uh, so when you rotate it back at the top, you'll notice the bottom, the bottom of the rudder then rotates forward. Now what the effect of that is, is one it, well, one, it makes the rudder more vertical, but more importantly, if you follow the line of the pintles, they actually cut across that bottom corner of the rudder. Now, when the rudder turns and the water's flowing this way, the bottom half of the rudder will actually get the, rudder, the water hitting the opposite side of the rudder, and that actually helps to turn your rudder, which is what you call balancing the rudder. Um, when you just put the rudder more vertically by changing the pintles, on the other hand, that doesn't change anything because the pintles are well in front of the rudder, and you still have the problem with the heavy rudder. So, to balance your rudder, you must move part of the rudder in front of the line off your pin tools. And that will actually hydrodyn hydrodynamically actually help you change uh, steer your rudder and make it very, very light to touch. We've gone from a full hand, quite forceful rudder pressure to now one to two fingers of light pressure, even in strong conditions. Um, and to hold the rudder in place once it's rotated backwards, I've simply made a, uh, a varnish wooden wedge and that goes into the top of the rudder there uh, and that holds the rudder very securely in that position. So there you go, a very simple way of actually getting a balanced rudder on an RL28 
and it can be applied to other trailer sailors as well in this, with similar sorts of rudder arrangements. Um, and some trailer sailors, I think the Clubman 8, actually have a cassette which allows you to do exactly the same thing. Not the traditional way of balancing a rudder, but very effective. And if you get it all right, with a balanced rudder, it will always be a pleasure for your crew to be at the helm.